Let's talk about Polygon's new corn. If you haven't heard, they're proposing to replace Matic with Paul, and that will be used for all Polygon-based chains and like super chains and stuff like that. So it's really kind of an upgrade to the system. I do think most of the community is excited about it, and I do think the proposal is going to pass. Now, don't fret. They'll tell you how to swap over. I'm not exactly sure what the ratio of swap is, but you won't lose any money over it. Um, Polygon is essentially like, you know, like having one coin do everything, and they're going to let people choose for the gas, like whether they want to use Ethereum or POL after they actually make the switch. Uh, a large part of the switch is kind of like the change in tokenomics, and you will have up to four years to actually redeem your old coins for new coins, your old Matic coins for the new POL coins. So don't worry, if you miss out and you don't do it within four years, it's kind of your fault. But four years, that should be enough time for you to actually not miss out on this. So what's the deal with the new tokenomics? Well, there's gonna be an infinite supply, but don't worry, remember, Ethereum technically has an infinite supply, but that's kind of irrelevant because Ethereum uh, obviously has a negative inflation rate right now. Polygon will not have a ne negative inflation rate. In fact, it will have a 2% inflation rate each year, but a 2% inflation rate, that's just like our economy bes uh, before this whole COVID thing. 2%. It'll take probably like 50, 60 years before anyone actually notices. And um, I don't think you're thinking 50, 60 years out into the future in terms of crypto. And they can change the tokenomics anytime within that 50, 60 years. So I don't really think you have to worry about. So 2% inflation rate, um, basically that's also to reward the validators and stuff. So the big thing is they're going to allow all holders to actually be validators. They've actually had a white paper for protocol rewards um, in return for validating Polygon chains, validators can establish at least three incentive streams. As described above, each every active Polygon validator is receiving base protocol rewards. The total POL emission for validator rewards is distributed to active validators proportionally to their POL stake. So it depends on like how much you're actually staking. Uh, uh, that's how much your validator actually gets in terms of rewards. So... The staking layer can support a practically unlimited number of validators. It manages validators throughout their whole life cycle and enables them to secure different types of incentives for performing useful work. Activation validators get initiated as part of the validator pool by depositing POL into the staking contract on the staking layer. Once initiated, validators become eligible to receive base protocol rewards. Uh, subscription. Once initiated, validators are allowed to subscribe to validate any Polygon chain. Validation. If a validator meets all the criteria of the Polygon chain it's subscribed to, it becomes a member of that chain's validator set. Validators can uh, validate multiple chains so you can get multiple rewards and their POL stake is acknowledged on each of those chains. If a validator gets slashed for a predefined slashable offense on one of the chains, its POL balance gets updated and reflected on all chains it actually validates. So like validators can also leave pools at any moment. Once the retirement is initiated, predefined, a predefined waiting period commences allowing for potential pending slashing. After the waiting period, validators are able to withdraw their POL stake from the deposit contract. So even if you get slashed for some odd reason, uh, you are still going to um, be able to withdraw your POL. So not uh, something to actually worry about. In return for validating Polygon chains, we discussed the previous protocol rewards. You also have transaction fee rewards. Validators are allowed to validate any number of Polygon chains. In return, these chains will normally award the entirety or a portion of transaction fees to validators. Additional rewards. As mentioned above, some Polygon chains can choose to introduce additional rewards to attract more validators. These rewards can be in any token, including but not limited to POL, stable coins, or native tokens of those Polygon chains. So it's becoming way, way more inclusive. I think there's going to be more people and more rewards coming up. And it's not just POL rewards. I think a lot of it is going to be mostly rewards from like other chains. So it won't really... Um, really uh, affect the POL inflation rate. So overall, I see this as a plus for Polygon. Yes, I know unlimited supply might actually scare some of you, but remember Ethereum has an unlimited supply and that really doesn't seem to bother people. So I think this will be kind of the same case. A 2% inflation rate honestly is not much year by year and it'll be years before anyone actually notices. It's actually much better. Act uh, it's, the actual inflation rate is actually much better than most other chains at 2%. So I think you don't really have to worry about that and it just opens up uh, more people to validating 
and more rewards. I think people will actually like that. So that's the lowdown on Polygon. It's probably going to be pretty bullish after this. Um, obviously, it depends on the performance of the network and all that stuff. But I can see this doing really well in the next bull run. So that's the lowdown on the Polygon update. I'll update it again, uh, again when, when you can actually update and when this proposal goes through. And of course, happy staking. I'll see you guys later.